It's Missy from Beer for the Ladies. Uh, you guys haven't heard from me for a while, and that's because what you don't know is that I'm a member of the military and I had to move from the east coast of Virginia all the way out here west to Colorado. So I couldn't brew anything. I didn't want to transport any fermenting beer, obviously, or a whole bunch of beer bottles and things like that. But now that I'm all settled, I'm back into it. And I found a really great little brew shop here in Colorado Springs, and it is called Old West Brewing Supply. So I bought one of their kits, and that's one of the first things we're going to try today. This is a, a extract with a partial mash where you have your specialty grains. So this is an oatmeal stout. In this kit, which costs $39, you get a grain bag. You get the bag of grains that they already crush and package for you. You get two containers, each 3.3 pounds, so 6.6 .6 pounds of this uh, malt extract. They give you enough priming sugar on bottling day and caps. Now, these we won't be using right now. We don't need that. They also include their yeast, which is the Sapphire uh, S04. And then this recipe has two hop additions. The first one is your Bittering Hops German Northern Brewer for 60 minutes, and then some Finishing Hops, which are uh, UK Fuddle for five minutes. So there's no, uh, there's no flavoring hops in this one. You get your instruction sheet for brew day and bottle day. And then last, what I wanted to do is to make this less of a dry stout and more of a sweet stout. So I bought a pound of lactose sugar that we'll put in there as well. So the very first step is we will trans, uh, trans, uh, what do we say? I'm going to put these in a bag. <laughs> I'm going to put these into the uh, provided grain bag. Using a bowl, if you use a bowl, then you won't get stuff all over your counter. We've already gone over here and we heated up our water. So it is where it needs to be. I'm gonna shut the water off because that's already as hot as we want it. So the easiest way to do this is to take your grain bag and open it up like it's a pair of socks. Put it over your bag, just like that. Just like that. And you gotta, be careful with this because it's going to make a little bit of a mess if you don't uh, pay attention. I don't cut through the whole top of the bag. There's no need. Now you have like a little spout. You just pour it into your, your bag right here. No problem. You see that they added all kinds of grains in here, including oats. It is an oatmeal stout. Um, I have made oatmeal stout before. It wasn't very successful. I used my own recipe, so this time I'm going to use somebody else's, and I'm hoping that I get uh, better results than I had before. So, that's a really big bag of grain, right? So you're just going to pull that up, take the excess, tie your knot way up here. Don't tie it down here, because all those grains are going to swell when they get wet. And if your knot is down here, then it won't swell very far. Water's not going to get all the way inside there, and you're not going to get everything you can out of this bag. So now we're just going to take this over here. Start to get a little wet. And just kind of drop it down in there. And then I just tie a nice loose knot right here, just to keep it from falling all the way in. I'm going to give it a couple of pokes with the spoon, break up any little dough balls in there. You want this water between 150 and 160 degrees. If it's higher than 160 though, this was about 165, it's not going to be a big deal. It's not going to ruin it. I've, I've had plenty of times where I've steeped the grains at 165. So, but remember that heat has to come off. Then what I like to do is just put the lid on it and then I set my timer for 20 minutes. And that's it. So we'll be back in a minute when all this is all steeped and ready. We'll take the bag out and then we'll do the rest of it. Okay, so we've reached the end of our 20 minutes. Go ahead and turn that off. Now it's time to uh, take the bag out. I find the best way to do this, that's why we tie this so loose, is undo it real quick and just wrap it around whatever spoon you have. So you can hang on to it because it's going to be heavy. 
And you're gonna let that drip for a little bit. Now, you don't want them to squeeze too much, um, but you still want to get, this is really heavy, you still want to get as much of that out of there as you can. But if you put it on a big spoon like this, see, you can just wrap it. There we go. That smells good too. That's pretty well. You just want to have a bowl or something handy, or else you're going to drip this everywhere. And just like any other wart, this stuff's super sticky. So you don't want to have that sticky. Oh, and I still made a mess. All right. So now we have our, our wart in here ready to go. I'm going to turn that heat back on in just a minute. But I have my... Um, my malt that was sitting in a hot water bath kind of loosened it up inside. So I'll grab one of these. I already took the, uh, the seal off, but you will have to do that. They do come with a foil seal. Now, you don't want to do this with the heat on because you're going to scorch it. So I put it in when it's still hot, start stirring, and start pouring that in. And you'll tell, because it'll suddenly get real thick. But see, it's pouring real nice because I put it in that hot water bath. If you don't, I mean, you don't have to, but this stuff is really thick like molasses. Super thick like molasses. So, I like to take my spoon and just kind of scrape the sides down. Really thick. You see how dark that's going to be already. So hold on just a second. I'm going to grab the other one. Again, you can see where that foil lid was. And then we'll start. Stirring and pouring. Really stirring it in there. Now, you can keep some additional hot water going so you can rinse out the container or, or whatever. It, it depends on what it is you're looking for, how far into this you want to get. Do you want every last drop and if you want to go ahead I have uh, I've been making this homebrew using extracts for a year and a half or so now and I've noticed that uh, it's not a huge difference if you don't get every last drop it really isn't all right, so we're getting that nice and stirred in. Now, i got to turn the heat back on this. Once it's boiling, that's when we're going to add our hops. All right, so it's been a few minutes. It took us about 10 minutes to get up to this boil. You can see it's starting to boil now. Um, you're going to get this foam on here, and things are going to start to move up. This is where you don't leave it alone, okay? Until you reach that hot break, this is where you don't leave it alone. Pretty much what's happening now, anytime anything boils, all the oxygen is being forced out of it, right? So you're going to see lots of bubbles. You're going to see lots of foam. Don't panic. Don't let it boil over, but don't panic. Just stir, turn the heat down. Also, what I like to do is if you, if you come over here, um, I'll show you really quick. You see it's starting to boil. Notice how the bubbles kind of dissipate when you blow on it. That's what I do right there. When it really starts to bubble up, I don't even turn the heat down. I just stay really close, I stir, and I blow. Now, I have glasses, so it obviously is gonna mess up a little bit, but it's okay, because my stove doesn't get a sticky mess. So, now that it's getting ready to boil, I took my, I took my hops and put them into a bag, because I like to keep as many of the hops um, in one place as possible, so I don't have to worry about scooping all that out. 
So I'm just going to drop that in there. This is that first hop edition, the German Northern Brewer. These are supposed to be in there for 60 minutes. So as soon as it starts boiling, you drop your hops in, which could cause it to boil up a little bit, okay? Because uh, you've added something to this that one, provides nuclei and also has oxygen in it. So it's gonna cause it to bubble up a little bit. That's okay, just keep an eye on it. Now I'm also gonna set my timer for 60 or uh, as you were, 55 minutes because I have a hop addition at five minutes remaining. So these are gonna be 60 minute hops. At 55 minutes, I'll drop in that last hop addition. At that same time, I will also put my thermometer back on the pot. That's to make sure that this is nice and sterilized. And I'll add that one pound of lactose sugar. There's no reason for it to boil the whole time or anything. It isn't sugar that gets um, converted to anything. It, it's not fermentable. So all I need to do is make sure it's not dirty. So I throw it in there to uh, sterilize it. There we go. So now we got a good boil going. I'm gonna turn the heat down just a little, but I still want it to boil. See, got a good boil going. See, it's starting to rise up. I'll stop stirring it so you can see that. You see that? It's gonna start rising up. As long as you're paying attention, it's not gonna do anything horrible, okay? I have lots of space in this pot. Some people, I see their videos and they only have about an inch of space and they don't boil over, so all you have to do is pay attention. And like I said, I just watch it and if it starts to come up, I give it a stir. I give it a blow and it works just fine. So I'm going to continue watching this pot and in now 53 minutes I'm going to come back and I'm going to put that those last three items that I just told you about, okay? Alright, so here we are the last uh, five seconds. I'm going to stop my timer. Um, now we're going to add the finishing hops for five minutes and be careful because that may cause another blow up. I'm going to leave that right here on the side so that can start. We're going to add this lactose sugar. Um, you do need to be stirring when you have this. So, you've got the other bag of hops in there. You just got to work around it. It's going to be clumpy. That's fine. Whoop. And if you can get it all over your stove, apparently that's fine too. Oh, I just made a big mess with that. That's fine. So, it stirs in real nice. You can see that. Get the other hops. Drop that in. Temperature only drops a little bit when you add stuff, so it should come right back to a boil with no problem. And then also we're going to add back this uh, thermometer so that when we start cooling it down, we can watch the temperature, but now the thermometer is also going to be sterilized by uh, being in the boiling wort. Eh, bubbles are starting back up a little bit. So, set the timer for another five minutes. This will go for another five minutes. If you had a whirl flock tablet or Irish moss or some something flocculation aid, this is when you would add it, okay? Uh, I don't have any right now, so I'm not gonna add it. But here in a moment, we'll turn all this off, we'll cool it, we'll put it in our fermenter. So now's the time, if you haven't done it, to go ahead and start mixing up your sanitizer and sanitizing all your things. Now, I have already done that over here. I have some sanitizer here that I mixed up. You can see that. I have my strainer, which I'm going to put into my six and a half gallon fermenting bucket. This bucket has some sanitizer in it. I already shook the bucket up. I'll get ready to dump that in a minute. We're also going to have to take a sample. So my hydrometer and my vial has already been in the sanitizer. We also have here the, that's odd, we have the yeast and the scissors. Both have also been dipped in the sanitizer and they're sitting here. You don't want to have anything, um, get, get any germs or dirt or anything on it. So here in a moment, I'll show you all the rest of it. Okay, so we've already reached the end of that last five minutes. Um, everything is in here so we can get it all nice and, and um, Sterilize. I'm going to turn off my timer. I'm going to reuse that bowl I had earlier. Get these uh, hot bags out of here. 
because that just is going to make it really difficult to to stir it. And here in a moment, I'm going to put it down in an ice bath. And I'm going to want to stir it. So I don't want that in the way. So shut your heat off. This is hot and sticky. You don't want to get it on you. So just be very careful. Now, what I've done is I have an ice bath right here on the floor and in, my, in a big cooler. I'm going to set this down in there and just start stirring it. And then I'm going to watch this um, thermometer here. And I want to get this down below 80 degrees if possible, somewhere around 75, 78 degrees. So. Now it's down in there, and you just want to you just want to give it a stir. And it should go down pretty quick. So we'll come back in just a second. I'll show you what it's like when it cools down. Okay, so we're down really close to 80 degrees. I'm comfortable with that. Um, so now we just need to tra uh, uh, transfer the cooled wort into our sanitized bucket. Now remember at this point, everything that touches this wart has to be sanitized. Either you dip it in the sanitizer or it's been boiled because at this point is when the beer or the wart is most susceptible to infection from all the little creepy crawlies that are flying in the air right now. So this has already been sanitized with sanitizer. I use Star Sand. You can kind of see the bubbles in there. Um, the only reason that wooden spoon is there is to hold that strainer in place, and that's to catch anything else that's in there. Now, because the spoon has already been in there, I'm just going to put it straight into here because we're going to use it to aerate that wart here in a minute anyway. This part can get a little messy, so just take your time and be careful. If it splashes around inside, that is just fine because, like I said, you're going to have to aerate it anyway. Again, this is uh, this started out as two gallons, so it's probably about a gallon and a half, gallon and three quarter of liquid. It's heavy. It's got lots of sugar and stuff in it. It's going to get all over, so just be patient when you are pouring it from one to the other. Okay. I use the strainer to catch any of those last bits of stuff that I don't want down in there, like hops you want the flavor of hops, but you don't want to drink a hop piece. There you go, that looks pretty good. We did really well. Those, you see down in there, there's no residue from hops because we put it in the bags. It caught a lot. Any little bit that was left is now right there, so that's good. I'll put those off to the side. Now I'm going to add water, and these buckets they have measurements on the side. I also have this little thermo strip so I can see what temperature I'm at. I'm going to want to ferment this at anywhere between 65, 75, 78 degrees, somewhere in there. So I'm going to fill this up with water to the five gallon mark at least. Now what I like to do is go a little bit higher because when I transfer it from the primary to secondary in a week, it's going to have sediment. And I don't want to pull that. So if I had it right to the five, then I'm going to end up with only four and a half gallons of beer instead of five gallons of beer. So that's math, right? So I'm going to put it right over here and I'm going to use my sprayer to uh, put cold water in here. Now, I'm going to use it on the spray because you'll see here, I'm getting lots of really good bubbles and stuff in there. That's what you want. That helps get the oxygen into the wart. Some stirring. Yeah. Look at that. So we're gonna fill this up that five and a half gallon mark roughly. This is a six and a half gallon bucket. So I'll see you in just a minute. Alright, so we got got about five and a half, five and a quarter, somewhere in there. I'm gonna give it some stirring. Work out your arms a little bit. You want lots of air in there for little yeasties. Now, once it's fermented, you don't want to add any air. But at this point, when it's just wort, you definitely want more air in there. And they make little gadgets that you can aerate with and everything. If you want to spend the money, then do that. But I've had 
just my results with this, and it gives me a little workout. It takes away some guilt to drink a beer. All right, so I got that nice and stirred up. The uh, last thing you do before you add your yeast is you need to take a sample. So what I have here is I have my wine thief. And, and you can try to use a regular siphon hose or something, but I like the idea of using the wine thief because it's super easy. This is all sanitized. I'm not going to keep this particular um, draw of wort. It's not enough to make a difference. So I sanitized it because it's touching the wort, not because I'm pouring it back in. But definitely if you are going to pour it back in, you, you want all of this sanitized. So the wine thief, you just dip it down in there. It fills up on its own. You can see down inside there that it fills up and it has a needle valve that then holds on to the beer, the wort, and you just push it against the side and you draw out as much as you want for taking your sample. And it, obviously I need more than this, so it'll take me a couple of times to, to get that in there. But I didn't have a wine thief before. Let me tell you, I got this for Christmas this year and it's like one of the best things that I've ever gotten. Uh, other than the, the beer kit to begin with, the stuff to brew with to begin with. Um, so what I like to do is to take the, uh, the vial and fill it all the way up so that I'm not trying to measure foam. Let it over, overflow a little bit. That's fine because you want a nice even line to look at. Let me get just a little bit more. See that? There we go. Get that off there like that. Now I'm just going to set it right here and let that settle. I'm not even going to look at it right now. So put that last little bit back in there. All right. So now we have that ready to go. Now I'm going to go over here. Scissors have been sanitized. This packet has been sanitized. That's what that liquid is, that sanitizer. And don't worry about the foam that comes from that sanitizer. That works well as a, as a yeast nutrient, so you don't have to worry about that. The only thing is, you don't want to be touching that top part, okay? Because that there's the yeast. This is dry powder yeast, and they're alive. They're kind of dormant, but they're alive. So we're going to sprinkle it right on top of here. And you don't even have to stir it. Some people stir it, sometimes I do. You don't have to, you can leave it just like that. Okay, we have our lid that has also been sanitized. You can see the sanitizer on there. We'll put that on there nice and tight. Mm. Oh. Sometimes it's a bear. Mm. Well, all right. Okay, so here we are. This is our our hydrometer. Okay, there we are. See that side here that has the 50. Um, what what we're looking for is somewhere around 1056, which is 1.056. And you can't see it; it's dark, right? So what I do is I just push it right here. Well, it's sticking to my finger, hopefully. And it looks like we're right where we need to be because the line that it's at is right here. There's 60, there's 50. We're right in between there. And each one of these little tick marks um, is 2. So there's 5 tick marks. That makes 10, 2 times 10. So if we're here at about 2 or 3 tick marks, that puts me right at... 1056, 1.056 or 1056. That is what the recipe called for on the box for 1056. And on our original gravity, our final gravity should be somewhere around 1013, 1016, which will give us five and some change. I haven't done the math, but um, on alcohol, ABD. So we'll see what that turns out. All right, so I had to get a little help on that one. That thing was hard to do. So these are sanitized. So you dump, dump them in the, the bucket of sanitizer. Boom, boom. They're all nice and sanitized. Now, uh, that hole fits into that grommet. Okay? And this is your, your bubbler, your airlock. Alright? 
Now, what I like to do is to use this as my little holder uh, to put liquid in there because it's convenient and easy. I just put my finger over that hole right there. Usually it takes two of these, goes up to the line, drop that in, done. So in about 24 hours, you'll see this um, start to bubble. If it gets too much, then you may have to put in a, like a blow off hose or something like that. But this bucket has, oh, the cat has decided to join us. Um, this bucket has a whole lot of headspace, so even if it does get a, a big Krausen, which is that foamy layer, I don't think it's going to touch that at all. Because you can see right here, I just want to show you, this is the top of this bucket, this is the top of the other one. Um, you got, you got uh, an inch and a half almost here. This is the bucket I used to use. This is the bucket I use now because it just has a bigger headspace, and I think that's going to allow for that Krausen because I've had lots of times when it's kind of blown out and then I have a tube that I cut you stick it in that hole where the airlock is right there and down into a, uh, a tub of sanitizer and then all the Krausen comes up through the hose and it doesn't make a big mess in whatever room you're, you're uh, fermenting in where it's sitting so hopefully this will solve that problem that's why I got this big one anyway once this is all done and we start to drink it and everything, hopefully uh, I'll be able to make a video and I'll show you how it turned out. And um, otherwise, I hope you guys learned something. If you didn't, then I'm sorry. Uh, you could just keep watching anyway and maybe get a laugh at my mistakes. And uh, I hope that you have fun uh, brewing in your own house. Okay? Cheers.